and today we'll be discussing the fundamentals of client invoices in Design Manager, uh, including the accounting behind client invoices, configuring settings for the invoice document, calculating invoice price, reports to monitor invoicing, etc. As I imagine this to be one of our longer webinars, if you need to leave along the way, remember that it will be available for viewing shortly on our YouTube page in the near future, which you can access from our brand new help center or go directly to our YouTube page and you can view all of our webinars from there. As usual, we're going to be using examples in both Design Manager and Design Manager Professional, and if you'd like to see a function in one platform or the other, just ask in one of the question periods and I'll be happy to do so. Uh, also, some features are available uh, for invoicing in only one platform or the other. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the <coughs> accounting behind the concept of the client invoice. Design Manager utilizes accrual accounting which is the recommended accounting structure for interior designers. In accrual accounting, the creation of the client invoice is fundamental in properly maintaining your business's financial standing. Coupled with recording of the bills and invoices from your vendor, the act of invoicing the client really powers the entire accounting <coughs> accrual model. Recording invoices from your vendors and invoicing your client also establishes a concept that is the cornerstone of accrual accounting that of the invoice as a physical, conceptual, and fiscal representation of the transfer of ownership of a good or service. You may order some merchandise from a vendor and may even provide them a deposit to initialize an order. However, the goods themselves remain an asset to the vendor until they actually create and send you an invoice. Likewise, as you are reselling goods and services to your client, they remain as assets of your company until you invoice the client. The invoices between you and the vendors and then eventually you and your client represents the transfer of ownership through the design process. Without going into great detail, the accounting behind all of this in the simplest of terms is that upon recording the invoice from the vendor, the cost of the goods and services go into your work and process asset account, which would be right there in the general a chart of accounts in Design Manager. This activity remains in work and process until you create the invoice to the client. At this point, the cost of the goods and services moves out of work and process into the appropriate cost of goods sold account. Simultaneously, you record the revenue into the proper sales accounts, incur any sales tax liability if applicable, and you also relieve any deposit that you may have collected from the client, reducing the total balance due on the invoice. All of this activity is encapsulated in the act of creating the client invoice itself. Okay, with the uh, invoice accounting preamble behind us, let me make just a few more points before we get into actually creating invoices. First, it is not necessary to create a proposal prior to invoicing the client. If you are billing for design time or for simple goods and services, you can skip the proposal process entirely and merely invoice the client as necessary. Further, you can invoice combinations of items that are not proposed, from different proposals, invoiced individually, etc. There's no steadfast rule on what items should and can be included on an invoice. That being said, unlike the proposal, the invoice is a fiscal document and cannot be edited. Invoices must be reversed in full and then recreated correctly if a, um, an issue arises. Tax authorities need to see a linear progression of invoice numbers to ensure that sales tax is being collected properly further. Editing an invoice allows the possibility of fraud within your company. If so inclined, I could create an invoice, send it to the client, edit the amount to reduce it, and keep the excess funds once the client remits payment. I, of course, would not do that, but the, um, the possibility of fraud would exist if an invoice could be edited. Finally, here's the catchphrase of today's webinar. Do not invoice the client until the goods and services have been approved, shipped, received, and installed by the client. That's the best, best case practices that we can suggest. If you need to develop a design concept with the client, pick fabric, review treatments, etc., use the proposal as it's a living document that is editable and is designed to communicate changes in the, in the project design to the client. You should not invoice the client until you're ready to fully transfer the ownership of the items 
to your client. Okay, obviously we need specifications for the goods and services uh, that we'll be invoicing the client. Since today's webinar is focusing on the invoice process itself, we're going to use existing specifications to keep ourselves on some type of schedule. If you have any questions on entering specifications, again, go to our help center, um, go to our knowledge base at, at knowledge.signmanager.com, go to our YouTube channel, watch our webinars and tutorials, call or email support, or stay tuned for an appropriate webinar in the future. Let's explore the process of creating invoices. <clears throat> We're going to pay particular attention to some of the often overlooked features so you can uh, latch on to some of the more uh, hidden topics. First of all, for those of you who aren't aware, you can import your company logo into Design Manager so it's displayed on your invoices, proposals, purchase orders, etc. To do so, you go to your company settings, company information window, logo tab. And here's my fictional uh, Vita Nova Designs logo. If you don't have a logo in, you can put it in uh, many ways, just like you do when you're adding pictures to items and components. If you have a scanner, you can put an image of your logo onto the scanner, hit the scan button. You can use the load button, where you can select a logo off of your computer or network already. And you can even use the paste image from clipboard button. So if you copy your uh, a image of your logo into the uh, uh, computer clipboard, come onto the logo tab and hit the paste image from clipboard button and it will import it directly in. For example, if we pop over to our YouTube channel, I could right click on my design manager logo, copy the image, and use the paste image from clipboard and bang, there is my logo all ready to go for me. Another option on the logo on your documents is the logo includes company contact information option. Now my logo for Design Manager or Vita Nova Designs does not have my company uh, contact information, address, phone number, etc. So I want Design Manager to print it on all the documents for me. But if the logo had that information embedded within it, I could use this option to prevent Design Manager from uh, displaying the address and uh, thereby duplicating it. So, for those of you who don't know, you can have your logo on your invoices along with other documents as well. And you can access the same information in the professional platform under File, Company Information Settings, Logo tab. There it is. Now, invoicing. Let's finally get down to the nuts and bolts. In Design Manager, all of our client invoicing is done off of our Documents and Accounting window accounting, the um, window that really powers all of the functions necessary to run our entire uh, company. And I can either go down to a particular project, down to the invoice folder, but I could right click and do new invoice to client, or I could simply have a particular project highlighted and click the client invoice button. Either way, it brings me to the new invoice window. In the professional platform, we go to our accounting tab, and the first option under accounts receivable is client invoices, which allows us to our new tab, and we'd hit the add invoice button and type in the project code for which we're going to create our invoice. Okay. Now, the new invoice window, by default, Design Manager is going to list all of the items not invoiced in full that are also not designated as complete or inactive. If I did want to see um, items that were invoiced in full, I can do so. Using the Show All option, if we select that, notice I now see item 5 for our sofa that has indeed been invoiced in full. In case I ever need to make a credit invoice or re-invoice this item again for some additional charges, those sorts of things, I can do so with the Show All option. That will not allow me, however, to see items that are marked as um, complete or inactive. For example, say I know that I have a chandelier for the Hilson's Pocono home. I don't see it on my new invoice window, nor do I see it when I click the Show All option. So if I look back under my projects, under my completed, ah, there is my uh, bronze chandelier. So if I edit that item, change the designation from 
completed to not completed, move it out of my completed folder. And if I go back into my invoicing window, voila, there is our chandelier. So you'll never see items marked as complete or inactive on your new invoice window, which is a uh, question that we frequently get in technical support. So always check to see if it's marked as such. In the professional platform, the same ideology. Under our specifications, if we look at our Hilson project, I could use the show option to see my complete items and there is my bronze chandelier marked as completed and I can simply change the status to needs to invoice and now I'd be able to see it on my invoice window as well. Okay. Some other features on the new invoice window. One, you have your proposal number filter. Uh, frequently you might only do be, be doing invoicing for a particular proposal or phase within the project. So I can narrow down uh, my list of invoices to a more manageable uh, amount by putting in a particular proposal. So if I look at proposal one for our wine cellar, pop that into my proposal number field, we're now only seeing um, the items contained on that particular proposal. Furthermore, if I do use the proposal number filter, that will also display on the header of the invoice as well, indicating to the client that this is uh, items only on a particular proposal. The date is going to default to today's date, but of course that can be changed. And the date on invoicing is very important. On my purchase orders or proposals, as we said, the invoice is a fiscal document. The date on the invoice always determines the period that the sales tax liability for the invoice will be due. If you file by yearly, quarterly, monthly, etc., it doesn't matter. In Design Manager, the invoice date determines when the invoice <coughs> itself is posted as well. So once we put the invoice date in, that's where it will appear on our sales tax report indicating that we do indeed owe that sales tax amount uh, to the tax authorities. Furthermore, in Design Manager, the invoice date itself also determines what fiscal period the invoice will be posted into. So if we're posting, if we're dating it 11-6, uh, I'll have a calendar date of today and I'll also post it into the fiscal period of um, November or 11 as well. Conversely, in professional, on the invoice window, I have a fiscal period that can be independent of my uh, invoice date. So that's always a consideration on that platform. Regardless, either way, the invoice date always determines uh, when you're recording or when that sales tax will be designated as being due to the state. Transaction description. As uh, many of you have heard, if you've attended these webinars before, uh, transaction descriptions are entirely um, optional but I strongly suggest them as I find them invaluable when I go to uh, research information that I may have put in months or even years prior. That description will not show on the invoice. It's entirely for your benefit, so you don't have to worry about the client seeing that. The manager code, that defaults from the manager or designer or uh, individual responsible for the particular project itself. So if we look at our Hilson project, can see that our salesperson manager indeed defaults down to the invoice. That's particularly useful in the professional platform as uh, the designated um, designer or manager salesperson uh, will be appear on the particular commission report for this invoice. We discussed pictures. The, I have an option to include pictures or images of my items on the invoice. I tend to do that as it makes the invoice look like a very professional document. It really has a dramatic flair to it. The only downside would be that it does uh, increase the size of the invoice. So if you have lots and lots of items and you're choosing to include pictures, the invoice itself can be quite lengthy. If we wanted to see how an item can have a picture, just like we did in our company logo, down to our Hilson project, let's look at our wine cellar. The item itself has a picture tab to which you can import pictures as well. 
the invoice window, like most windows in Design Manager, you can sort your columns by uh, most any column on the grid. It comes up defaulted, sorted in location code. So I'm going my outdoor uh, living area first, then my wine cellars. Notice that the column heading for location has the arrows pointing to the right. That indicates that I'm sorting by that particular column, and I'm sorting in ascending order, in other words, A to Z. If I click the column heading again, note that the arrows now point to the left, and now I'm going in descending, in other words, Z to A. And you can do that for almost all of your columns. You can also search very quickly um, for particular items, depending on which column you're sorting by. So if I'm sorted by a reference number, I can quickly find item number seven simply by typing item number seven, and I'll drop right down to it. I could even sort by description and jump right down to my Richard collection just by typing the first few characters of the description itself. If we um, are using the show all option, notice that items that are invoiced in full will always appear at the bottom of the grid no matter how we are sorting. So if I'm again sorting by reference number, reference number five is invoiced in full, so it'll always be listed beneath the items that are not yet invoiced. That's a common um, uh, point of confusion when people are looking at this window. So remember that all of the items invoiced in full will always be at the bottom, uh, no matter how you're sorting the grid. Okay. Let's hop over to the Remarks Options tab and take a look at some other features here. You have some remarks that can be uh, added to your invoice. These will default from the project setting, but you can change them or pen to them or add to them as necessary. You can even see on a project window, if we look at our Hilson project, defaults, advanced options. That is where the default remarks come from. Those inherit down from the company itself to each new project and can be changed per project and then changed per invoice as well as much of the defaults and design manager allow us to do. From here, we can access the project advanced options very quickly by using the advanced button in the bottom right hand corner. That jumps us, we'll always be warned that we're going to uncheck or untag any items before going to the advanced options, which is just fine. And that jumps us right to the Project Advanced Options window for our Hilson Pocono home. Now, there's tons of different settings on this, um, this window. They're all described in detail in the help system. You click on the uh, uh, question mark icon and jump right to Design Manager's help, and it'll list the descriptions of how each of these various settings um, work. But let's go through uh, a couple of the more important ones for our discussion today. First and most importantly, is the pricing selections. The pricing determines how Design Manager will automatically calculate the default invoice price for each of your various component types. And you have a few options here. First is the selection for always proposal. This setting will always look at the current price in the specifications for that particular component type. So whatever we have uh, listed in our item and components window for merchandise is what we're going to default to the client. Most, um, most generally, we're basically honoring what we, uh, uh, what we originally uh, proposed to the client. So whatever the specification price is in the item and component window is what we'll be defaulting the invoice price as. The second option is always actual. When I'm using markup pricing, Design Manager will calculate the invoice price based upon the cost of the vendor invoices currently recorded for that item. So if we've recorded the bills from the vendor and the cost is actually higher than we imagined, Design Manager is automatically going to pass on that increase to the client. If the cost has actually decreased, Design Manager will um, likewise reduce the price to the client. So it's a more of a dynamic invoicing structure that's predicated on what you truly um, are charged from your particular uh, vendors. That being said, of course, if we don't have any vendor invoices recorded for a particular uh, item, the invoice price is going to be zero. Another common question we get in technical support, 
I'll go into the invoice window. I don't see any pricing. Gener uh, generally, they have it set for all these actual, and there's no vendor invoices yet recorded. Lastly, it's automatic. I kind of consider it the smart pricing structure. Automatic will take the higher value between the always proposal and the always actual settings. So this allows us to pass on any increases in cost to the client if the vendor has charged us more than we anticipated, while it allows us to keep any additional profit uh, if the cost has decreased. It also catches any item um, that does not yet have any vendor invoice recorded. So if I have a case where uh, I generally go by always actual and I don't have those vendor invoices enter, the automatic setting uh, will cover me by using the always proposal value. One point here, uh, another question that we get frequently in technical support is the pricing structure, these pricing settings only apply if we're using the markup cost. If you tend to do your pricing structure using the discount list or even the fee structure, the pricing values here have no, app, uh, no effect whatsoever. It's whatever you have in the specification as discount and fee sort of supersede these pricing calculations. Also, depending on the version of the software you're using, making changes to this pricing structure uh, may require you to use the update item function to propagate those changes down to each of your items very important um, concept of the invoice pricing selections. A few more common uh, areas of questions and highlights. We have our title for each of the component types. So notice in general, my component types will have the same invoice title. In other words, what, I'll be, um, what I will be entitling that particular type on the invoice document itself. Uh, perhaps the Hilsons don't like the, when I use the term freight, they want me to use the term shipping on the invoice. I can change the title and it will print directly uh, for all of my freight charges to the client will now say shipping rather than freight. And you can change each of the component types except for merchandise independently. Hand in uh, hand with the titles is the style. And we have a few choices here. The style determines where those particular component types where the price of those particular component types will be displayed on the invoice. And there's four options here. The first of which is combined. What that does is it'll take uh, all of the prices of that component type and blend it or merge it in with the merchandise itself. For example, if we had freight set to combine and I had a couch for $1,000 with $100 worth of freight, the client would simply see the couch as a single line item on the invoice at $1,100. In other words, both the merchandise and the freight are blended together for a simple, uh, uh, a simple unified price. List would then take the freight or the particular component type, not display it as um, uh, with the merchandise price, but show it right beneath the item using the invoice title. So in this case, if we had our couch, we'd have one line for the couch at $1,000. Immediately beneath that, it would say freight, $100. So that shows the client um, what the cost, what, what their price for the merchandise is, and the price of the freight on a per item basis. Next would be total. Total takes all of the price of those particular component types for all of the items on the invoice, sums them together, and displays it as a single entry in the, um, the total region of the document with the particular title. So for crating, if I had multiple items on my invoice, all of which had a bit of crating, all of those charges would be summated and shown as a single entry in the total region of the document. Lastly would be ignore, which it, um, simply does not include any prices that we have estimated to the, uh, the client for that particular component type. You may want to have that as a record for yourself for never being intended to invoice the client uh, and still input it into Design Manager to monitor your profit, you can use the ignore option. Very, very, very rarely used. And if you have any questions about that, uh, please ask uh, support at designmanager.com before doing so. So those are our different styles. All of this, this options give us ways to present the information differently on the invoice document to our client. And we'll quickly go through a few more here. We have options to show the site address 
on the invoice. So uh, we might have a billing address for the Hilsons at one location, but we're actually the site address would be their Pocono home, for example. And we can even show option to show the ship to address. So in that case, we'll be showing our billing address, our site address, and our ship to location. For example, we might be billing the Hilsons at their New York home. The site is going to be their Pocono residence, but all of the goods and services are first going to go to a third-party staging area or shipping company. And that's very um, handy uh, for insurance records. It'll show right on the invoice where the stuff, where the merchandise is going to be shipped to first uh, for insurance purposes. You can use the suppress location heading option if you don't want to have uh, the room locations or conceptual locations shown on the invoice. You could suppress unit prices if desired. Conversely, you could show in, uh, unit prices out to three decimal places rather than two decimal places. Single item invoice. Certain design firms uh, will create a single item for each, uh, a, sing a single invoice for each item within the project. So they could go through and you could add an invoice, select the item, create the invoice, make another invoice, select the second item, et cetera, repeat, repeat, repeat. The single item invoice allows you to select as many items as you want on the new invoice window. And upon uh, generating the invoices, Design Manager will automatically break out or create a new invoice for each of those selected items. Uh, most commonly, that will be used for a design firm dealing with a uh, commercial client that requires uh, each piece of merchandise to be on its own invoice. So it's rarely used, um, it's generally rarely used, but it is um, handy for those instances where it's needed. Uh, remarks on a new page is a great option. If you have very lengthy remarks, you may have very standardized terms and agreements, or terms and conditions that you want displayed on your invoices. And if it tends to be lengthy, I think it looks uh, more aesthetically pleasing if that is always on the final page of the invoice and the remarks on new page will do so. Lastly, there's a couple options for time. Um, we have an entire webinar devoted to uh, timekeeping and invoicing time, so I won't go into great uh, length and not that, but you can use the time supplement option. So this would allow you to generate your invoice and also have a subsidiary document printout that will show each of the uh, detail of design charges that may be included upon that invoice. You can also optionally have time details, which would show the same information on the invoice document itself. And you can even use the start and end time option to show uh, the time frame or time period that you've recorded on your time entry. Okay, enough of the uh, advanced options. Again, they are described in great detail right in the help system, so feel free to take a look at that to refresh some of the things that we just talked about. And let's get back to our invoice window and actually start making some invoices. Just a few more uh, extra features here. You do have the option of editing an item right from the new invoice window. For example, say we catch a, uh, an error in spelling, price, or, uh, et cetera, and we want to correct it. We don't need to go all the way back to specifications to do so. We can edit an item right from the new invoice window. So if we take a look at, let's say in uh, item four here, I have a capital C incomplete that I don't find to be aesthetically pleasing. So I can highlight the item, hit the edit item button, which jumps me right to that item for that project, and I can change my capital C to a lowercase. And let's say I need to make some installation charges as well. I can do so right from here. It's 200. Our price now increased to 23.25 from 21.25. And if we click OK, we'll see that both my spelling has changed and my invoice price has increased as well. So you can be very fluid in Design Manager. You don't need to go all the way back to other windows. You can do a lot of editing right from here as well. The other option besides editing is overriding. As we just discussed in our pricing calculation um, with the invoice pricing of always proposal, actual, and automatic, Design Manager attempts to determine the proper amount to invoice a client based upon those selected settings. 
However, you still may have circumstances where you need to simply bypass the calculated price and then put a different amount. It's uh, generally used for partial billings or when you want to uh, make a reduction uh, of the invoice price at the time of invoicing. So let's say, for example, we have our bar stools here. And let's say we only received two of them, delivered them to the Hilson's house, and uh, we want to invoice just for those two, and we'll invoice again when the other two come in. I can use the override feature to do so, which brings us to the override invoice price window. Click the override option that's highlighted in red, and I can change my quantity to invoice, my price to invoice, to reflect uh, that I'm only invoicing for two at this point. And if we click OK, notice that the invoice price is now 910, invoice quantity has also decreased, and you can easily see that this item is in override mode with the red check mark. So if you're not, if you're making changes in specifications and it's not being reflected in your new invoice window, be sure to check that override column. If that's a highlighted red check, you know it's an override mode and nothing that you do on the specification side will be reflected. To get it off, just go back in, uncheck the override, design manager recalculates the original pricing structure and it easily updates. The professional platform has another bell and whistle in the same vein under client invoices for Hilson. As the professional packages tend to have a lot more partial invoicing, we look at our same item, override, override again. You can simply change the quantity of the invoice, hit the recalculate button. So I'm just going to say, hey, listen, do you want to uh, recalculate the price to invoice taxable amount, deposits, etc., to the change quantity. On clicking yes, Design Manager does all the mathematics for us. Again, more for uh, bigger design firms uh, that might be invoicing for 10,000 yards of tile or those sort of things, and only 9,000 came in. It just hand, it's just handy to have the mathematics done for you. Okay, overriding. Not commonly used, but the example of partial invoicing is the, by far the most common. Now what we need to do to really create our invoice is select, or as the design manager calls it, tag the invoices that we wish to use. And when we do so with the tag column, notice it's, high, it's highlighted nicely in green, and each invoice, uh, each item that we select automatically in, updates the pricing in our totals region. So our invoice price increases, our sales tax, any and all deposits that's been recorded for each of the items will automatically be displayed along with the balance due. The only field that does not automatically update is the retainer. Now we can manually input a retainer amount to uh, reduce the balance due. Now I know that the Hilson project has $7,500 in re open retainer. As we can see on our status window, available retainer. 7500 for the Helsons. So I could input any value up to that 7500 to be used on an invoice. If I try to exceed that amount, say if I use 8000, Design Manager will simply say, uh, listen, you are exceeding that amount. Here's the total amount available. You can use your deposit analysis report or other areas in the software to find out how much you have available. Professional platform also has the available retainer displayed on that invoice, uh, new invoice one, uh, window directly as it's more common, uh, the retainers are more commonly used in the larger professional packages so the invoice available retainer is uh, displayed right there for your convenience. Okay, lastly, you may have dozens, scores, hundreds or even thousands of items in a particular project. And uh, sometimes finding them or tagging them can be a bit of a laborious process. So we have the tag function available for you. What this will allow us to do is Design Manager can automatically select or tag items based upon some criteria. We could tag or select everything with the All option. There it goes. I can untag all the items if I think I've made a mistake with the Untag All. Clears them out. I could select very conveniently by a location. If I wanted to get all the items for our wine cellar, I 
can do so. Very handy is tagging by a particular item. If I have difficulty finding item 8, for example, I can simply use the item option, type in the particular item or search for it on my item search. And Design Manager will not only tag it, but drop down there immediately for me. So that's very handy if you're struggling to find a particular item on the new invoice window. Lastly is the layout window. By default, Design Manager is going to show all the items on the invoice first in location code order from A to Z and then within a given location numerically by reference number, which works fine for most cases. But you have full control of how you want those items displayed. Using the uh, layout window, which brings us to the arrange items, you can tell Design Manager how you want locations and even items within a location displayed. First of all, I like to use the expand all options so I can see every, every one of my items within every one of my locations. And then I could say, well, I want to only focus on the items that I've currently tagged. So I only have five items out of dozens, and I want to focus simply on those. As we're doing now, notice we have items one through four for the wine cellar and eight for the outdoor living area. I may then want to have the wine cellar displayed before the outdoor living area. And within the wine cellar, I might want to have the chandelier listed first. So you can simply drag and drop an entire location and then drag and drop an item within a particular location to rearrange as desired. What you cannot do is move an item from one location to the other. You would need to go back to the specification itself and change the location on the item and then it will be reflected on your range item window. A few other handy points here. Say we want to have the outdoor living area to be always on its own page. So we want to have a, um, a page displayed or a page, uh, we want the page to end and then have the outdoor living area to begin on a subsequent page. We can do so by using the page, bake, page break before option. If that's unselected, I'm going to show all my wine cellar items, and then wherever they end, I'll just simply begin the outdoor living area, even if it's in the middle of the document. If aesthetically I want that to always start on a separate page, use the page break before. You can do that for each location, if desired, and you can even do it for an item as well, if you'd like to have um, the sconces, for example, print on a, a subsequent page. Another handy feature is to keep description together. By default, Design Manager will list each item as much description as it can print on a page. If it exceeds, it will begin on the next page. Again, for aesthetics, you may not want to have uh, the dining room table description split between pages, so you can use the Arrange Items window to say, keep the description together. Then Design Manager will calculate and say, listen, I can't fit all this um, dining room table on page one, so I'm going to begin it in its entirety on page two. So you do have a lot of ability to, uh, to make changes to how you want all of your items arranged, all your locations arranged, and even how to aesthetically show them on the invoice. And if you have uh, come in here and made several changes and you want to get rid of them all, you can simply do the undo sort and it will go back to Design Manager's default, um, default settings. Okay, layout window. Now we're ready to finally make our invoice. Let's do an invoice just for uh, our wine cellar on proposal one. So we can use our proposal number filter, enter that in. I can use my tag feature and select them all. I'll leave today's date set for um, the invoice date, which is just fine. Again, my transaction description optional, but I am a huge proponent of using them. Let's just say it's for the wine cellar. If we now go ahead and click OK, that brings us to our print client invoice window where we can select uh, both the format of the invoice from residential, commercial, and modern. We'll get into the with deposit versions momentarily. And I can select the printer itself. And a, a quick discussion on printers in Design Manager. For reports, Design Manager will always use your uh, computer default printer for proposals, invoices, 
purchase orders, checks, and other documents, Design Manager will store the printer that was last used when you accepted that particular document. What does that mean? If we go ahead and uh, make this invoice and accept it into the software, Design Manager is going to recognize that and say, hey, I'm always going to default the HP LaserJet the next time Brad comes in and does an invoice. I might use a different printer for my purchase order that perhaps prints on triplicate paper or something along those lines. Design Manager will recognize that as my purchase order printer. So if you're ever having a problem, hey, why is Design Manager defaulting um, repeatedly to this particular printer, when I invoice, simply select the proper one, uh, accept a document, and Design Manager will store it there for you. And if we go ahead and click OK, we're going to generate our print preview of the invoice itself. And here we go. Again, this is our modern document. It's the most contemporary, in my opinion, format, and I tend to gravitate towards it. As we saw, a lot of the information in the header can be um, changed uh, per project or per company as well. We have our invoice title, project name, there's the proposal number being displayed because I can input the proposal number on our proposal filter. I'm showing the billing, the site, and shipping addresses as we saw. I have our location and the body of the document. We see our description, any formatting would be there. Here's our pictures, again, making it look quite professional and dramatic. Quantity and unit to measure, unit prices, extended or total prices, reference numbers, second page, we're going to see our final um, our final chandelier. <clears throat> we have our installation and labor being listed. So I'm uh, using the list option here, so it's being shown directly beneath the bronze chandelier, but my freight is being total for all items at the bottom. There's our total merchandise, sales tax, total amount, my deposit being shown, and reducing the balance due. There's our remarks. As in all of the print preview windows, I use this as a final way to verify all of uh, the accuracy of all of my work. If I see anything that uh, concerns me or I have a question in the pricing or uh, spelling mistakes or what have you, we always want to be sure to not accept the document. But from here, we can print, we can email and export, export the document into PDF, etc. Once everything has passed our um, accuracy and we're sure that everything looks fantastic, we want to go ahead and accept. And I like to say that be sure we're ready to accept here as we're going to commit this invoice into Design Manager. Remember, this is now a fiscal document and if we have to correct any fundamental issues, we're going to have to credit the invoice and recurate it properly. Click OK or accept. We now see our invoice in our open invoice folder, invoice number 10,005, today's date, the original balance due, the current balance due, and there is our transaction description. Again, I think that's very convenient as I can see immediately what was contained upon that invoice just by looking at my documents and accounting window. On the professional platform, when we go to make our invoice, everything is extremely similar. Select our items. But first, we remain on our new tab. So in professional, I can batch make invoices. I can select all of my projects, all of the items, and have them accumulate on my new tab. <clears throat> and then I can selectively print or post any or all of them with the print post option here. I can also print the journal out for review for my controller or for my own records. Again, use the modern option. I can select pictures if desired. And just like our standard format, there is our invoice. We can print, email, export, and we again accept. Upon doing so, we drop off of our new tab and we're listed on our existing tab. So there is invoice five, today's date, current fiscal period, information about the project, total sales, sales tax, deposit applied. Slide this out a little bit. 
net invoice, any payments would appear, adjustments, balance due, etc. I didn't put a transaction description in this example, but it was show there as well. So fundamentally, making the invoice is very, very similar in both platforms. Okay, that gets us pretty far along here. Liz, I can pause a moment or two for any questions that might be outstanding. Do we have any? Brad, we do not have any outstanding questions. Okay, so we've created our first invoice. Let's go ahead and expand upon what we can do now with invoices once they've been created. First and most commonly is going to be reprinting an invoice. Reprinting is making an exact copy of the invoice as it currently exists. If we didn't print out a copy of our wine cellar invoice and we need to do so, in Design Manager I can right click and do Print View, or I can highlight it and hit the reprint button. In Professional, I would go to our Client Invoices, Existing tab, highlight the invoice on the existing grid, and click Reprint. Let's say that we want to reprint, for example, how about invoice 10,001 for the Carters? So we can use the reprint option. It's going to default to the format that I selected, but I could, of course, change that if desired. I can optionally include pictures. Again, pictures have that dramatic effect, but do increase the size of the document. I could use the email option. I want to email the invoice directly off to the Carters. I could use the email option, and rather than using the print preview or printing it directly to my uh, HP LaserJet, Design Manager would bring up the appropriate email window for me with the invoice attached as a PDF. And if I have the email address of the Carters in their project, I'll even default that um, email address as well, making it very simple to email it off. If we click OK, you can see very simply we're making an absolute copy of the invoice as it originally stood. And there it is, all five pages. A handy feature on the reprint is also the show payment option. The show payments can be used to provide the client an accounting of uh, any payments they've made subsequent to when the invoice was originally created. And then it's going to have um, a current balance due, so that it almost becomes a, a mini statement for the invoice itself. We could also update some remarks as well if we want to have additional communication when we're printing. For example, we might pop in an additional invoice remark. Thank you for a payment above. There we go. So now I'm going to say thank you for your payment. Your current balance due is listed above as I'm using the show payment option. And now I'm um, enhancing the invoice into be literally a current statement of how much the client currently owes. So now in our total region, we have the original prices, deposit being reduced, original invoice amount, any and all payments which show right beneath it, and we have one for 590870. Total payments applied so far, and the current balance due. And there is our updated remark as well. I'm communicating, hey, thank you for the original payment. Here's what you currently owe. So you can fire this off uh, to the printer or um, uh, export it and send it to the client, indicating they owe another 5000 on this invoice. So the show payment option is very handy as well. Another feature is using the update features. For imagine that we catch a spelling error in the description of one of our items. Uh, we can correct that in specifications and then use the update function to propagate that through to the invoice. So if we look back at our invoice 10001, notice that I inadvertently said headboard and feetboard, and I'd much rather have that say headboard headboard and footboard. So what we can do is go back to our specifications for the Carter's project. We can edit feetboard into footboard 
and hit OK. Doing so does not update that invoice. But if we go back to the existing tab, oops, hit the update. I can use the update description to match specifications. If I don't put a specific item number in, I'll update all of them, but I may just simply want to update our item one. And I can even update the arrangements using the layout window. I can update the remarks here as well. Or I could even put a transaction description in that I may have missed as such. We hit OK. I'm going to be warned that I'm going to be making some updates. And immediately, I see my transaction description now being displayed. And upon reprinting, we'll see that I no longer call uh, the, uh, the merchandise a feet board, but I'll be now calling it a footboard as desired. And there we go. So the update feature, because we can't edit our invoices, allows us to make cosmetic changes on it. Um, using that so we can rearrange it, change spelling errors, those sort of things. And you access it in Design Manager very similarly on the Adjust window and you can use the Update Invoice information and you can see that all of the uh, same features are available there as well. Now we talked, um, repeatedly I've stated, once we have created an invoice, it's an immutable fiscal document whose original format must be preserved for tax purposes. If you notice an issue with the invoice, sales tax is incorrect, uh, an item or items were included that should not have been, etc., we must credit or reverse the invoice in full. This process actually creates a credit memo, which is a perfect reversal of the original invoice with its own unique invoice number. This is not changing a minor balance on an invoice or writing off an invoice to bad debt, which I'm going to discuss shortly under adjusting invoices. Further, this is not refunding a particular portion of an, of an invoice as a particular item is not to the client's liking. That will be discussed and has been discussed on our webinars on uh, returns and credits for clients. If you want to uh, review those on our knowledge on our new help center as well. Crediting an invoice is for the circumstance when we need to reverse it in its entirety. So let's take a look at uh, Carter's Pennington Home invoices. Notice, invoice 10,001, I already have a payment upon it. I still have a balance due of 5,000. Well, I might say, I need to credit this invoice. It's incorrect. I would go to the Void button or I'd right-click and hit Reverse or Credit, and I'd be prevented from doing so. I cannot create credit an invoice or reverse an invoice if there's any payments on it, uh, adjustments, etc. I would have to remove the payment and then I'd be allowed to credit the invoice. So you have to have the invoice with no payments or uh, invoice adjustments upon it to be allowed it to credit. Conversely, if I go down to invoice 10002, I don't have any uh, payments or uh, adjustments upon it. So I can right click, hit reverse credit, or I can click the void button. Either way, that brings us to the reverse credit invoice button. And that allows us to input a date, which is going to default to the current date. Again, this will be uh, the date that the tax rebate will be recorded. And you can change that, of course. Transaction description will be uh, extremely helpful. Not approve or whatever may have happened. And then two handy features. The hide on reports. Uh, would prevent the original invoice, 10002, and its subsequent credit from not appearing on the client's statement or client's accounting inquiry. In other words, uh, reports that are intended uh, to be given to the client. If I simply made the invoice an error, I don't want my mistakes to be shown to the client. So the hide on reports will prevent that from happening. I could also use the skip printing option. Generally, when I'm crediting an invoice, I may want to have a, a physical printout for my files, or more commonly these days, I would export it and put it into uh, my computer or network uh, along with my other documents for that client. But if I don't need to have a copy saved, again, I simply made a mistake, I could use the skip printing function and it would just immediately credit the invoice without printing. In our case, we won't do that so we can take a peek at how the credit invoice is going to appear 
I'll use our modern format again. And notice the title is now credit and ML, indicating this is a full invoice reversal, and all of, any and all of the items would be negated throughout, reflecting an exact um, uh, reversing or backing out of the original invoice and even restoring the client's deposit back into their account. Just like a traditional invoice, we always have to accept it to process it into Design Manager. And then notice that the invoice 10002 drops out of our active folder, is now under our paid closed. And we can see that here's our original invoice credited as marked by the X, and we can see here is our new invoice or credit memo of 10006. There's our transaction description, and it even says the reversal of the original invoice, so you can link the two together if desired. In the professional platform, same uh, functionality. If we go under our existing tab on our invoices window, we would go down to the desired invoice, invoice 10002, hit the credit option, and everything here is the exact same, except you do have the fiscal month option. That's going to default to the original fiscal month of the invoice, but you can certainly change that to the current if desired, and everything else will be the exact same. Another final option on invoicing. In situations where the client may either over or underpay an invoice by a nominal amount, or in the unfortunate case where the client ceases or refuses to pay, you want to use the adjust invoice function. This allows us to enter an amount by which to reduce the balance due for an existing client invoice while recording the reduction in the appropriate offsetting account. In general, you would be crediting invoices far more frequently than using invoice adjustments. And they really should be limited to those two particular situations. Uh, um, closing out a nominal balance due upon an invoice for an over or underpayment, and in the case where the client is refusing to pay and your accounting professional wants you to put that activity into a bad debt, either revenue or expense account. So as an example, let's take a look at uh, invoice 10,003 has an, uh, a balance due of 28 cents with the Carters. Obviously, I have several ongoing projects with the Carters. I'm not going to uh, bother them for 28 cents when they're doing tens of thousands of dollars with me, so I, but I do not want to have this 28 cents hanging in my accounts receivable until the end of time. So I can highlight the invoice and use, in this case, the Adjust button. That brings us to our Invoice Adjustment window where we'd add a new adjustment. The invoice adjustment in professional, obviously you have a fiscal period which defaults to today, today's date as well, and I'm required to enter a general ledger account. The account is the account, in, the GL account is the one into which I want the reduction of the invoice to be recorded. As with other areas in Design Manager, where you enter, you're asked to enter the appropriate account, such as operating expense window, journal entries, etc., miscellaneous cash receipts comes to mind. Entering the wrong account could have undesirable effects. So here are some accounts that you would not want to use on the invoice adjust window. You never want to use the accounts receivable account. That's automatically going to be affected by making this invoice adjustment. You never want to use cash accounts or bank checking accounts. You never want to use work in process, accounts payable, client deposits, etc. Basically, any of the accounts on this other account tab would generally be off limits. In this case, I would use the account that represents what revenue do I want to reduce. I'm basically backing out this 28 cents, so I'm making less upon it. Since this is an invoice just for furniture, I'm going to go down and use my furniture revenue account. This is a nominal underpayment, a transaction description, and I will put the adjustment in as a negative value as I have a positive balance due. So if I type in a minus 0.28, notice that the adjusted balance due goes down to zero. Upon clicking OK, I have my invoice adjustment listed, 
by closing that window, I now see for invoice 10,003, an adjustment listed and the balance due is indeed zero. So now I've removed this uh, minor 28 cents out of accounts receivable. In the same vein, in Design Manager, here's our invoice for the 20, uh, remaining 28 cents for the Carter's Spring a Teen Beach Home. I could right click and adjust or hit the adjust window and in this case I'd use the adjust invoice amount and again I'd input my furniture, general ledger account, transaction description and adjustment. So with that brings us to just a little bit over our uh, one hour webinar today. Uh, we reviewed pretty much all aspects and I hope in great detail of creating, editing, um, monitoring, uh, creating, uh, credit, pardon me, creating, crediting, adjusting, reprinting invoices in Design Manager. Tried to show a lot of the extra features that are available uh, and some of the accounting theories behind that. Um, I'll be happy to take any questions that do remain. Uh, Liz, if there are any, otherwise I'll turn it back over to you to uh, conclude. Brad, we don't have any more on the answered questions, so I think I am going to end things here. Thanks to Brad and thanks to everyone who participated in our webinar today. We invite you to email support at designmanager.com with any other questions you have about the software. And we hope that you enjoyed today's webinar. If you would like to join us for our next webinar, please visit designmanager.com to register. Or if you'd like to see a recorded version of this webinar or you missed one of our previous webinars, please visit our YouTube channel. Thank you and we hope you have a great afternoon.